the heart of a vanishing rainforest lives a snake with a deadly sixth sense. The Bushmaster targets animals by their body heat, in daylight or in darkness. This is the hole that a Bushmaster was seen. Shed skin was found there. But it goes down and then curves up again. So it's actually very difficult to see more than, more than about a foot or so. I feel it probably it could go 10 foot or more. So unless he's sitting in the entrance, I haven't much chance of actually finding him like that. The Atlantic Coastal Bushmaster is heading for extinction. This slithering critter lives in the narrow stretch of rainforest that once covered Brazil's east coast. But 95% of its habitat has been destroyed by man. In 10 years, only a few Bushmasters have been seen. But reptile hunter and scientist Mark O'Shea has come to capture one and extract its venom. This is what we've come for, the Atlantic Coastal Bushmaster. This is a captive one, the rarest of the Bushmasters, which are found from Central America to Amazonia and into the Atlantic Coastal Forest. This snake has large venom glands, yet it doesn't feature highly in snake bite statistics. He doesn't feature highly because some of the victims are never found. They die in the forest before they can reach help. The Bushmaster is a pit viper, sensing its prey's body heat after dark, with the heat-sensitive pits just below its eyes. Its prey don't stand a chance. It just does not miss, and it strikes very fast from a coiled position. Death from a bite can be agonizing, with victims bleeding from every orifice. If you're bitten in the hand, um, the tissue will become destroyed and you could potentially lose fingers, maybe even the hand, because of the necrosis which would set in dissolving tissue. Bushmasters have the longest fangs of any viper in the world fangs which can deliver enough venom to kill 15 grown men. This captive snakes in the expert hands of Dr. Anibal Melgarejo, Brazil's leading anti-venom producer. He's joining the hunt for the chance to study venom from a wild Bushmaster. The search begins on a cocoa plantation, an area infested with rats, the perfect prey for a hungry Bushmaster. Argolas, um, plant today. Mm -hmm. They meet up with Antonio Argolo, a local snake expert. If there is a Bushmaster here, it could be lying low, digesting its prey. The only way to find out is the hands-on approach. Bushmaster venom is lethal to its prey. But it helps keep the snake itself alive by speeding up its digestive system. See, this snake eats big rats. And when it's eaten a big rat, it is vulnerable because it's got a large food bolus in its stomach. And it could be sleeping that off and be attacked, be unable to defend itself, and be killed. So it wants to limit the amount of time that it's got a heavy meal in its stomach. And the venom is designed to start digestion um, outwards at the same time that stomach juices are digesting inwards. So if you take this snake and you take a boa constrictor, which is non-venomous, of the same size, and you feed them both the same size rats, 
This snake will be, uh, be active again far sooner than the boa constrictor, which only has its stomach juices to rely upon and is therefore vulnerable for longer. 15 minutes, uh Anibal has seen what the Bushmaster's venom can do to a bite victim. At this early stage in the hunt, he's understandably concerned about Mark's safety. There are simply loads of small species of snakes in, in this sort of leaf litter. This is a brown vine snake. It's found all through tropical South America. It occurs all the way up Central America, Mexico, and actually into the United States. But it's a, he's aggressiver. Yes, I know what you think. Look at that threat. It's a mildly venomous snake. It does have fangs and venom, but it's not dangerous. Look at that for a look, look, look at that. And it's beautifully camouflaged. Looks just like a liana, like a vine. So he's inflating his neck to make himself bigger. Don't work with me, old son. I know exactly what you are and your capacity. Mark's confidence comes from years of experience. But Anibal and Argolo have never seen snakes handled quite like this, and Mark's making them a little uncomfortable. Mark is an acknowledged scientific expert. He records all his finds in detail and has led expeditions on every continent. But he can also seem a bit flamboyant, and so far it's not going down very well with the Brazilians. The search goes on. Blacktop or tarmac roads stay warm after dark. They make great places for snake hunting. Snakes are cold-blooded and the warmth gives them energy to hunt. Mark has often had success on roads like this and even a few surprises. The wolf spider, which is carrying her entire offspring like fur on her abdomen. And they'll be on there for a while until they're independent. But it's quite common, you'll see, that a lot of female spiders carry their young around on their back. You can see her from a good yard, a few yards away because their eyes glow in the torchlight. This is a Sudaba nigra. It's a, one of the black snakes of South America. It's got a, a close relative. There's only one other Sudaboa, and that's Sudaboa nuidae. And I've collected that in Venezuela and in Brazil in the north, but I've never found this species before. And it was on the blacktop road over there, which is one of my favorite snake catching habitats. Halfway through the expedition, there's no sign of a Bushmaster. On the surface, things are fine, but frustration and professional rivalry are creeping in. Mark's come here with a film crew, and the local scientists may not be enjoying their supporting roles, or Mark's choice of wardrobe. I don't always wear T-shirts. I'm most often in, in the bush. I, I prefer to wear um, a safari, you know, proper safari shirts, pockets, pockets are handy things to have. Um, so, you know, red bandana, it's the only colour you'll find on me. Um, I tend to wear somber browns and greens, but I suppose this uh, might be considered, uh, <laughs> well, it's a snake and dip. As the rainforest wakes up, there's a crisis at base camp. Mark and the Brazilian team have been locked behind closed doors for hours. Anibal and Argolo are insisting on the privilege of catching the Bushmaster, if the team ever finds one. The species is so rare that this capture would mean a lot to Mark, but he may have to give way if the trip is to continue. 
If I find one and I shout you, you better come quick, otherwise I'll catch it. <laughs> they reach a compromise. Anibal and Argolo will share the honors. The trip can go on. Big animals that once dominated Brazil's coastal rainforest are being wiped out. They're disappearing along with their habitat. Only 5% of the original forest survives. O'Shea and the team move a thousand miles north to an area where big snakes have been seen. But only 15 Bushmasters have been captured here in 10 years. There's an even bigger problem for the snake hunters, a five-year drought. Cactus grows instead of sugarcane. Terrible conditions for Bushmasters. That's, uh, okay. Take it out. Mark heads for a rapidly drying yeah. riverbed okay. where an unidentified snake has been spotted. Right, well, if it's there, it's not visible. So we are gonna have to move this tree. She's under here now. I saw her and she, she may be curled up. She may be making a break for it. Yeah, I can see her. She's moving away. Olga Grange. She's right underneath. It isn't a Bushmaster. They think it's a different but still dangerous pit viper. Yeah, he's right, it is. Yes, she is. She's a beautiful, angry, and newly shed Jaraka. But they've been tricked. It isn't a true Jararaka. It mimics the deadly species to frighten off predators. That's good. I'm really pleased with that. I'm so pleased it's a Jararaka. Rear fang. Oh, rear fang. It's rear fang. It's a Jararaka falsa. Oh, brilliant. The eye is round, not vertical. They still have a bit of a bite on them, but they give it away when they open their mouth, because if this was a Jararaka, we would have a pair of neat fangs suddenly appear here. And we haven't. What we've got instead is a little fang here, and one on the other side. This is a rear fang snake. And also, if you look at the eye, it's got a round pupil, instead of a vertical one like a cat, which a Jararaka would have. She's, she actually will actively forage. She'll, she'll see movement in the water, say a frog, something like that. It'll have to be movement that'll trigger her interest initially. And as she approaches, she'll use her forked tongue, which comes out from the very front of the mouth, and she'll taste and smell with that until she gets close enough to make... There it is. Perfect. Do you see that? Good girl. And then she'll strike, and she'll chew rapidly on the prey to bring the rear fangs, the enlarged rear teeth into play and it's not so much venom as a toxic saliva and it will it will subdue her amphibian prey she'd get several bites into you like that and it, it would hurt this is a baby jararaca and even at this size a dangerous little fellow. Ooh. I ain't got the best grip on him yet. Now I've got him. Ooh! So I don't want to really drop him on my lap. He's going to bite, isn't he? See the fangs. Give you a nasty time, even at this size. I doubt you'd die unless you've got a weak heart. We wouldn't be very well for some time. I think you'd need a trip to the hospital. Crindios, Pai Todo-Poderoso, Criador do Céu e da Terra, eu creio em Jesus Cristo, Seu único Filho, Deus é nosso Senhor, nasceu da Virgem Maria, padeceu, subiu com os Pilatos, foi crucificado, morto, foi sepultado. Os homens já tinham passado com os cachorros, naturalmente bateu na cobra. Ranch owner Frederico Filho was bitten by a much more deadly snake. The Bushmaster. 
My leg kept getting more and more swollen with each passing day. It got to the point where the doctor was very worried because he could not see an improvement in the effect of the medication. He examined my leg and he was worried that gangrene would set in and that he might have to amputate the leg. I was so uncomfortable that I couldn't even touch my leg. I couldn't even put a finger on the leg. I would cry out with the pain, the loudest screams in the world. Frederico recovered, but he can't walk easily and now believes that only prayer can protect his land from the Bushmaster. Unfortunately, it seems to be working. There are no snakes here for Mark. day. It's hot. A hundred degrees in the shade. There's no sign of rain, no sign of a Bushmaster, and the expedition is scheduled to end tomorrow. When I chose the Atlantic Coastal Bushmaster, I picked the Bushmaster that was on the verge of extinction. 95% of this rainforest is gone, and it is a deep forest snake. It can't survive in the habitat that replaces the rainforest. And so the challenge was to come and look for this rare snake. So I won't be disappointed if I don't find one, but I'll be very excited if I do. It's been very dry. It hasn't rained, according to the locals, for six months. That's very bad for Bushmasters. They don't like the rain, but they like to come out after the rain. They like it damp and humid and dark and rainforesty. Zero hour approaches for Mark. The rains finally come. Rains to flood the deep burrows of the Bushmasters, raise the humidity, and entice out their prey. Mark knows that this is the last chance to capture this elusive snake. As the rains stop, they prepare to search the deep forest by lamplight. There's danger in the dark, and the snake has the advantage over the warm-blooded humans. The pit viper will see them first. of an exhausting hunt, Mark and the team get lucky. Hello. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hi, Sim. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, excellent. <laughs> Bam. Um, I want one. I thought I was going to find something. I didn't know I was going to find a snake. You just coiled up. It was there, wasn't it? And suddenly it was down my foot. There, well, that's where it was, wasn't it? Right, right, right there. Right there with the torchlight. Yeah. Just coiled on the, on the, on the and I, I mean, I came over uh, and, and I, I couldn't believe it. The log. I was looking inside the log and, and it suddenly was on my foot. He said, he said to me, is that a Bushmaster? I said, yes, it is. Does it want me, to, when it, if he takes it with the, with the noose? Fernando. Yeah? Fernando. When he when he nooses it. When the tip guy, Alan? Does he want me to pin it behind the head? Or take or tail it? Yeah, but just not press. No, gently, gently, gently. The venom extracted from this snake may help in the development of a new anti-venom. No, no. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Quick. Got it. <laughs> this capture could save Brazilian lives. It was a very lucky find when we were just thinking we weren't going to get one. Have you got the bag on him, Mark? Very good. 
This technique is supposed to leave the snake's head on one side and inside, and my hand outside, which is a very desirable set of circumstances. Whoops. He just tried to bite me. There's the venom, look. He just stabbed through the sack. He thought he was in with a chance then. Now, it's a very lucky capture. They've only found 15 here in 10 years. So to find one tonight is really um, extremely <laughs> lucky. There are creams made for this part of your body, this part, and this part. But cross this line and you're in Dr. Scholl's territory. They designed their Pedicure Essentials Ultra Overnight Foot Cream to make the toughest part beautiful. Dr. Scholl's Pedicure Essentials. Look at this beautiful bracelet. Get your credit cards out right now. It's $39.95. Don't miss out on this. They are telling me right now. after another Animal Planet's Proct Week. Five Nights of Danger, starting June 14th. Only on Animal Planet. Living, breathing entertainment. Woohoo! Sit tight. Mark O'Shea is taking you on another adventure. This time to the bayou. Stick around for another O'Shea's Big Adventure. Next, right here on Animal Planet. As, as one of my snake catching memories that, that's, that I, I will retain to the day I die, we could have just gone the other way around the tree and headed off for the five degrees off. It's night time. We'd have missed it. How many other Bushmasters were out in the bag that evening? It was like walking into the forest and finding a coin. Don't move. Animal Planet's Night of Big Adventure continues next as Mark O'Shea heads down south to search for the biggest, baddest reptile in the bayou, the alligator snapping turtle. It's all up next, right here on Animal Planet.